Hey everyone, this is Brie. Welcome to my kitchen. It has been a little while since we've been in the kitchen. And listen, my kitchen is totally quiet right now. It's about three o'clock. I am gonna go ahead and get dinner started. We are gonna make broccoli cheese soup and I'm really looking forward to showing you guys how to make this. I will be putting the recipe in the comments. Um, I know a lot of you really want my recipes and the thing is most of my cooking I do by taste and sight and smell and I make it up. But I will go ahead and I will put a recipe in the comments here. I did say I wasn't gonna start doing that until I had a website but who knows when that's gonna happen. So I would hate to leave you guys frustrated so I'm happy to put that recipe down there for you. One thing that is really nice to have with broccoli cheese soup is some crusty sourdough bread. And I don't have any of that, so what I might do is make homemade biscuits to go with it. Though a biscuit is not quite as delicious dunking into broccoli cheese soup as some sourdough bread, so we will see what I decide to do. Broccoli cheese soup is a really simple soup to make. Now my family likes it especially thick, and there's a couple of ways that you can go about thickening it. You can use um, a lot of broccoli and cheese, or you can create a slurry with um, flour or cornstarch and water, and then that will also thicken your soup. I try to just use the broccoli and the cheese, that way if we have someone here that's gluten-free, the cornstarch is gluten-free, but if we have someone here that's gluten-free, I don't need to use um, flour to thicken it, but it's totally fine to do that. Okay, so let me show you what is in this soup. It is so simple. I really hope you're gonna go make this after I make this today because of how simple it is. First, let me say that if you have a garden and you plant broccoli in that garden and you put it up for the winter, this is basically the perfect thing to use that broccoli for. It uses a lot of broccoli and it's even better with fresh homegrown broccoli. I did not have a garden last year, so I will be using store-bought, but let me show you what I buy. When you go to the store, you can get broccoli florets or you can get broccoli cuts. In my experience, florets are a lot more expensive than cuts. And in my experience, using cuts doesn't change the flavor whatsoever in the soup. And so I use broccoli cuts in my soup and I tend to use florets in things like casseroles or if we're just having broccoli for dinner, um, which I can show you a tip, goodness gracious, my earrings keep getting caught. I can show you a tip about how to um, stir fry frozen broccoli and it'll come out really good and not so soggy. But for today, we're doing soup. So for my family of eight, I use 32 ounces of broccoli. That makes a soup that will create leftovers for us, which is great because I always want leftovers. I'm not gonna do a double batch today because I don't have enough of some of these items to do a double batch and it's fine. This was a last minute request from some children because it's a cold, rainy day. So I said, why not? I have everything I need for it, so let's just make it, even if I can't double it up. These were about 350 and these were about 250, so that's a dollar difference. Which, if you buy broccoli one time, isn't a big deal, but if you buy it a lot in the winter, which I do, it adds up pretty quick. The other thing I have is some homemade broth frozen and we're gonna use that today you can of course use store-bought broth it's not a big deal they're just a lot richer flavor profile with homemade broth so i prefer to use it when i have it you're gonna need some butter you're gonna need milk you can also use half and half or heavy cream i have both of those but the amount of cheese i put in this soup i don't really need to do half and half or heavy cream but that is up to you if you want to do that one onion some garlic now, I love garlic, but I don't like going heavy on garlic in this soup, so I'll probably just do like two cloves. Salt, some celery seed, and the tiniest little bit of, bit of nutmeg. That bowl seems a little too small, but it'll be fine for the purpose. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just start thawing out that broth. And it's not necessarily gonna get thawed out all the way. I just need it thawed enough that it'll come out of those freezer bags. So while that's going on, we're gonna go ahead and cut up our veggies, which, because we're using frozen broccoli, is only our onion and our garlic. I don't know your favorite way to cut up an onion, but mine is to cut the ends off. And don't forget to always use the back of your knife to move things out of the way so you don't dull your blade. 
And then I like to cut my onion in half and then pull off that first layer of skin. And I like to move fast so my eyes don't burn so much. I just remembered I found some goggles the other day so I can actually, oh, I can get them on my head. I can actually use these to keep the onions out of my eyes. This really works better than anything else I've ever tried, ever. You look silly, but your eyes don't burn. Especially if you're cutting up a lot of onions, do this. Even if you're gonna use your food processor or something, you still have to cut them and pull the skins off and all that stuff. So this, this is the way to go. Okay, so I have, them, I have it cut in half. I like to keep mine lined up because then I can go really fast. You tuck your fingers under if you remember. And turn, everything stays lined up. Another tip when cutting onions is don't pull your knife up. Seesaw it, but not all the way up and down. Just Seesaw it like this. See, I never pull my knife all the way up. It makes it go really fast. Now, you might think I would leave those on while I cut the garlic, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and start sauteing those onions in butter because you don't wanna add your garlic at the same time you add your onions. The onions take a lot longer to soften than the garlic does, and what'll happen if you put them in at the same time, you will burn your garlic. So, go ahead and cut up your onions. Start sauteing them in your butter, then go ahead and mince up your garlic, then add it towards the end of when your onions are almost soft and transparent, that's when you add your garlic. If you have gas, I would do this at a medium low heat so you don't burn your butter. Butter does not have a high burning tip, so you, you, really, don't, you really don't wanna burn your butter. Now, browned butter tastes good on a lot of things, but I haven't found that I like it in my broccoli soup. Yes, a whole stick of delicious butter. a teaspoon of celery seed listen celery seed is extremely strong you do not want to overdo it and we're just going to go ahead and add that into our onions to get that flavor out into the butter we're going to keep those onions on low so we can come over here and mince up our garlic without worrying about those onions burning now one thing i wanted to tell you is that I do like to thaw my soups or my broths or anything liquid upright like this because a lot of times the tops of these bags will leak and so especially if they're not double bagged which these aren't so keeping them upright keeps them from leaking out of the top where the zipper is and can I just say that cooking with wooden spoons is one of the great joys of my life <laughs> it's something so small but so lovely all right so we're gonna pull off two cloves here like I said, I love garlic, but two cloves is really enough for this soup. Now, you probably already know this trick, but in case you don't, this is how you get your garlic cloves open very, very easily. You put them like this, you squish it down. Remember, use the back. Squish it down, then your peel will come right off, and half the work is already done for you. Now, I do not worry about cutting off the ends of my garlic. See, you didn't even have to do a whole bunch of the chopping because a lot of that was done for you whenever you squished that garlic up. And just go in there and mince, 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 mince. There is just nothing quite like onions cooking in fat, whether it be bacon grease or butter. Hooey, that is gonna bring the children run into the kitchen wondering what and this mama cooking. While we're waiting on that, let's admire my new apron here. I did notice 
since I started filming cooking videos that my aprons were pretty gnarly. So I went ahead and got a few. They're just off of Amazon. I will link those. Hopefully whenever I edit this video, I'll hear myself say that I will link those. <laughs> and I'll remember to link them, especially since I'm gonna write the recipe. But I feel a lot better now that I'm filming in nice, clean aprons. My other apron aprons were stained no matter how well I washed them because they've been being used for years. So it feels nice to have some fresh digs. Isn't this what people do? They put my slippers on. <laughs> Aprons and slippers, that's how we cook at home, right? So, if I can get this on film, you can see the onions are almost transparent. You can tell the difference between that white onion and those transparent onions. That's a fresh onion. These are cooked onions. So they're pretty much see-through. We're gonna add the garlic now, since they're not quite done yet. Okay, the next thing I do is I add my broth. Now a lot of times I do like to add my veggies to my herbs and my fat and get all that flavor into my veggies. But in this instance, I don't do that. I just don't find it necessary to make this delicious. Why add a step when you don't need it? You have enough to do every day. Now this isn't totally thawed and that's okay. I just wanted it thawed enough to get it out of this bag. Okay, we're gonna let our What's your name? Second. Okay, just a second, okay? Hey, Mama, this one's ready, this one's ready. Put yours there. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna let this thaw, and I'm actually gonna turn up the heat because I want it to get hot. So I'm gonna put it on about medium. And while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna go get my boys a snack. Now that I'm back from snack duty, we are gonna work on cleaning up this island and we just do that, we multitask, we clean as we go. So at the end of this process, we don't have too big of a mess to deal with. And we'll go ahead and we will wash a few pots and pans to keep things simpler for whoever is on dish duty, which is not me, but have the time right now, so why not do it? Okay, I'll go get them. My twins are awake, so I'm gonna put all this on pause. I'm gonna turn the heat down to low, and then I'll come back to this once they are settled and totally up from their naps, because a lot of times they're gonna be super blumpy when they get up. And they're gonna need my total attention for probably 20 minutes or so before I can come back to cooking. The dynamic duo is up. What do you see? <laughs> do you see yourself? Can you say hi? Yeah. Right, let's go snuggle. Mama, I forgot to do my shield. If you ever wonder why your grandma is obsessed with feeding you or your mom when you come home after moving out, it's because mothers know that feeding children makes them be in much better moods, right? There is nothing like a blumpy baby right after a nap to snuggle up to, so warm and cozy. And it was worth pausing my dinner prep to go do that. Okay, we have our broth thawed, so let's add our broccoli. Now don't worry, I'm gonna let you know when to add your cheese and your milk and all that stuff, but it is not right now. Right now, we are gonna get this broccoli cooking in the broth. And you know, a lot of times, the reason people don't wanna cook vegetables in water is because the water um, the vegetables will lose a lot of their nutrition. But what's great about this is all of that nutrition from cooking your broccoli is gonna go right into your broth. You're just gonna pour that whole bag in there. You are gonna wanna turn your heat up to about medium. This is on a gas stove, it's gonna be different on electric. But you're gonna turn it back up to about medium. You're gonna want to really cook that broccoli. You're gonna get it nice and soft. It's gonna turn colors. It's not gonna be that nice, beautiful, it's not gonna stay being that nice, beautiful, vivid green. It's gonna turn into that kind of like dingy green color. You want it to be so soft that it just completely falls apart because you're gonna be blending this up into a nice, thick, creamy soup. I know we're cooking, but I just had to show you guys Hello. what the babies are doing. I know. Are you saying hello? 
they put these down on the floor, these little pads on the floor themselves, so they could see out the window. Hello. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at my broccoli. It still has a pretty green color. It's not quite ready, and um, so if you have just florets, it'll cook a little quicker, but if you have quite a few stalks in there, like I do because I was using the broccoli cuts, not just the broccoli florets, I'll show you, you're gonna want, cause what you're gonna do is be cutting this up in the with an immersion blender or with your blender, and it needs to very easily be able to cut through that, and I'm having to use some force to cut it. Now, you're gonna basically want this to be falling apart. You're not always gonna need to take it out and test it. You'll be able to see the color, um, and you'll be able to see it kind of just falling apart when you pick it up with your spoon in the future, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what it looks like when it's not quite done yet. Okay, the broccoli is looking ready. You see how it's a dingy color? That's kind of how you know it's ready. For this next bit, I did take it off the heat. We will be putting it back on the heat. Before we add any milk or cheese or anything like that to this, we are gonna immersion blend the broth and the broccoli. And you may also be wondering why I haven't added salt yet, and that's on purpose. That cheese has a lot of salt in it, and so I like to add the cheese and then add the salt because then I salt it to taste. Okay. Now that the broccoli is blended up, and it doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna do this a couple more times. I'm gonna add the cheese, and you do not wanna add the cheese all at once because it'll just form into a big clump and it'll be a lot harder to blend it into the soup. So I'll just add a handful or two. Plus this will also help you know how thick you like your soup to just do it a handful or two at a time. Next round. In my, in my opinion, this is a pretty expensive soup to make if you're not making the cheese yourself or growing the broccoli yourself, though, you know, one $2.50 bag of broccoli isn't a big deal. It's not that expensive, but if you are making those things yourself, you're gonna significantly reduce the cost, as well as with the broth. So the more from scratch this is, the more cost effective. But once you're adding in whole bags of cheese like this that you did not make, <laughs> it starts to get a little pricey. Here it is after four handfuls of cheese, about one pound. It's getting nice and creamy and thicker. You may wonder why I add the cheese before the milk, and it's because I want this pot to still be hot enough to melt this cheese into the soup. And I also just don't want the soup too hot for the milk because I don't want it to curdle. So typically it's gonna be boiling that curdles your milk, but I just do it in this order because it seems to work the best to make the consistency of soup. One thing you're going to want to do while immersion blending is just stirring this occasionally to make sure that cheese isn't just going to the bottom and stick into the pot or just balling up in a big ball. Now here it is with all of the cheese in it. It's nice and creamy and pretty thick. This is not a stick to your ribs thickness. Some people really like that. And if you do, that's when you're going to want to create a slurry out of flour and water. All you're going to do for a slurry is put some flour in a cup, maybe a couple tablespoons, or even depending on the thickness you want, half a cup to a cup. You're going to add just enough water to smooth out that flour. You're going to whisk it till there's no clumps, but it's going to be very thick. You're gonna add that to your soup. You're gonna wanna turn the heat up some, but not all the way up to a boil because you do not want to curdle your dairy products. You definitely wanna do add that slurry before you add the milk if you're gonna thicken it. Um, you may wanna look up how to do it with cornstarch if you're gluten-free. I've never done it with cornstarch, I just know that you can. All right, I'm gonna add my milk now. Once again, you could do half and half or heavy whipping cream if you prefer. But I feel like with the amount of cheese and the amount of butter in there, we are good to go on richness. And now I'm actually ready to taste this and see how much salt I want to add. Apple. Oh, it is so good already. I'm going to start with two teaspoons. I may go up to a tablespoon. But I'll test it again later to find out. The last thing you're going to do is just add a pinch. And I'm telling you, when I say a pinch, I mean a pinch of nutmeg. What this does is it kind of just adds this flesh, fresh flavor to this soup. And it accentuates the other flavors and it just gives it a depth of flavor it doesn't otherwise have. But, Sorry, guys. but literally,
literally all you need is a pinch. If you overdo it, it will taste a lot like nutmeg instead of just having this essence of nutmeg that brings out and accentuates the other flavors. You ready to taste it again? Let's do another taste test. It's definitely gonna need a little more salt. This is why it's so hard for me to give you guys recipes because so much of my cooking is eyeballing things and tasting things. I'm actually gonna add a whole nother teaspoon. So that would be over a tablespoon because a tablespoon is two and a half teaspoons and I've added three teaspoons. Now I'm not gonna add any more because as you know, the salt will work its way in there over time. And if I add more now, it may end up being too much salt. It's almost five o'clock, which means it took me almost two hours to make this soup. However, if I wasn't filming and I wasn't tending to babies and being interrupted, it would take me about 20 minutes. I hope that that will actually encourage you, one, that you can make this soup while doing a whole lot of other things and it won't mess it up. And two, if you don't have much time but you can be focused, it's 20 minutes of your, of your life. And it's super easy to make, super simple, easy to get ingredients, and I hope you'll try it. It's not quite dinner time yet, so I am not going to keep that on simmer. I am just going to put a lid on it and let it sit there and let that salt work its way into the soup. And then I'll warm it up a little once we have dinner in about an hour. I'm warming the soup back up. We are about to eat dinner. I did decide to just do store-bought bread that is in the oven warming up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll make this recipe. And we will see you in the next one. Have a good night.